Simply put, news matters. As a viewer of this newscast, you may believe that. Not everyone does. And a new film airing tomorrow on Rocky Mountain PBS is examining why that is. Brian Malone joins us. He is the filmmaker behind News Matters. Brian, thanks for joining us. Let's talk, hey, Kim. About, talk about this project and, and how it came to be. It, it, it was in part because of the death of, of some newspapers. Well, yeah, Kim, it's a big story that I know that a lot of you are, have been aware of for a long time. Uh, the Denver Post, as well as uh, several other newspapers around the country, have been in, uh, you know, bad shape, frankly, financially, uh, you know, for more than a decade. And, uh, th you know, three years ago, there was a big national uh, up uprising with uh, some of the some of the journalists there that, you um, uh, you know, that caught national attention. So I thought that was a, you know, that's a, that's a good, great hook for a, for a documentary film. Yeah, and when we think about it, I mean, the Rocky Mountain News, the Denver Post, mm -hmm. the changes we've seen, media in general has changed and it's shifted as how we get our information. And this isn't true just in Colorado, this is across the country, how people get information. Exactly, yeah, the, the trend has been going on for, uh, you know, more than a decade. And um, you know, newspapers across the country uh, have been weakened, and many have folded. I mean, since 2004, 2,000 newspapers, more than 2,000 newspapers, have folded or vanished off of the uh, the, the American landscape. And when you think about how, uh, and it's not just big newspapers like the Denver Post, but you know, small little newspapers in rural counties or in towns that it's been their only source and their their uh, most reliable source for news for decades, sometimes over a century. And when those things vanish, it becomes a very dangerous landscape for misinformation and disinformation to, to take its place, especially in this digital age. Yeah, and so important, those small areas to have that newspaper. We know Absolutely. this project has been going on for a long time for you, but then mm -hmm. we get a pandemic, contentious election, a failed insurrection at the Capitol. How have the events of the past year impacted your work? Well, that's certainly given me a lot of time <laughs> to, to think about this film. Um, uh, I've, I've spent the last year kind of pouring over all of this footage and examining everything um, and, and to put this film together. Uh, it started three years ago, actually. But um, the, the interesting thing is, is the film was done. And then January 6th happened, the, the insurrection on the US Capitol. And something just kind of hit me in the face that like these these protesters have all have all, um, uh, you know, charged the, the US Capitol based on dangerous misinformation. They got bad information and it turned into a deadly siege. And so uh, to me, that's a very clear illustration of, of what, why we need trusted journalism in America and, and in every community in America. And so I reframed the film around, uh, around the siege on January 6th. I have looked at parts of it, and I'm going to ask you a little bit about how we can watch it, but I also think mm -hmm. it's really important that our young people, I mean, our aspiring journalists and, and really those around the country see it because they're the ones yeah. that are digesting this information in these 10-second clips, sometimes 30-second clips, and looking at only through a social media view. You bet. You bet. And, and I think that's an important distinction is that I think um, – uh, so I, I actually get a guest taught a, a class last week uh, at Colorado College with some journalism students, and it was loud and clear to me that they want to consume good information, um, but they want to do it on their own terms with their own technology. So I think what uh, we as, uh, I guess, the senior uh, generation of journalists have to do is help help them find a way uh, to consume news since they're going to be the next generation of uh, of um, uh, decision makers and policy makers. Uh, we need to find a way to work within their sensibilities to make news more digestible and 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 easier and more palatable. Frankly. Well, we miss you. I know that you had a history way back here at Nine News, <laughs> but you're doing much bigger and better things. How can people watch? The galaxy long, long ago, yeah, far, yeah, far well, away. We don't always <laughs> talk about those things. Yeah, yeah, where yeah. Can, where can we watch News Matters? Okay, tomorrow night, 7 p.m. on Rocky Mountain PBS. That's Channel 6, if you still 
uh, click the, use the old clicker. Um, and then it's streaming on Rocky Mountain PBS's website or their streaming platform. So if you have like an Apple TV or Roku or something and you can get to Rocky Mountain PBS's streaming service, it's gonna be there for, the, there for the next 30 days. And then it makes its kind of national tour around PBS stations. But the big news is, is that hopefully it'll be in colleges and universities around the country and libraries starting this fall. That would be fantastic. Brian, thank you. And uh, Nice we'll, to see you. Yeah, it's always good to see you. One day we'll see each other face-to-face -face <laughs> again. Okay, thank you. One of these days. <laughs>